All right, welcome everybody. We're here today with uh, a very interesting company. Uh, we heard about this company, Modbion, from one of our viewers in Sweden who visited one of their towers. And so we're lucky today to have with us uh, Geir Sodrin, who is a development engineer, and Otto Lundman, who is the CEO of Modbion. So thank you guys for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. So you build wooden towers for uh, wind turbines. Um, how, what is the current technology for building a wind turbine? So the current technology for building the towers are tubular steel towers mostly. Um, but as wind power becomes more cost effective, the taller you make the turbines, these uh, cylinders that make up uh, the towers, they, they need to become larger than what is possible to do really uh, with that technology since it needs to be transportable. Now, wait a minute. I mean, steel seems like the perfect choice here, right? It's pretty cheap. It's very strong. Um, why can't we just keep going taller and taller with steel? Yeah. So logistically, you you need a larger base diameter than than the four point five meters that is possible to transport on uh, the average road. Uh, so you need a modular technology, and Modvion has such a technology. But then uh, you by going away from steel to a wood-based material, as we do. We lower the weight, we lower the production cost, uh, we make it a whole lot more carbon uh, neutral. Um, instead of a large emission, we have carbon sequestration in the material. Wait a minute, so explain to our viewers how wood can be carbon neutral. It seems kind of counterproductive, right? Because you have to cut down trees and everyone loves trees. So why, why is it carbon neutral? In general, in Sweden and many parts of the developed world, uh, the wood, the timber industry is actually they're growing trees to cut them down and then they regrow them again. So it's not like they harvest rainforest in general. It's more of a developed industry with lots of history and it's a sustainable system. And every time the trees grow up again, they capture more carbon from the atmosphere. So uh, if you keep the, the wood in the structure as a wind turbine tower, uh, it actually has a net negative uh, emission effect. So it's actually that the carbon is holding up the wind turbine uh, as opposed to it being either uh, burned and going back into the atmosphere or decomposing and going back into the atmosphere that way. So whenever you build a structure, whether it's a wind turbine or a house or a tree house or, a, <laughs> you know, even like a table, you're sequestering that carbon, you're preventing it from going back into the atmosphere. And it's only when uh, you finally either burn it or it uh, decomposes that it would turn back into carbon in the atmosphere. And by that point, it will actually be sort of back to neutral. So until then, it's actually a negative effect or like... <laughs> That's, uh, Counting on that there's other tower, uh, trees growing up at the same time and sequestering uh, carbon again. Yeah. yeah. Now, you brought up an interesting point. You said that um, current technology means that the base of the tower would have to get bigger than four and a half meters. Why is four and a half meters such a big deal? Because that is the, the limit for what is uh, uh, transportable on a, a normal road. Whenever you get to a bridge uh, or uh, a tunnel, 4.5 meters is what is possible to get uh, through. So how does your system work? It's it's uh, modular, but can you explain like what that means? Uh, yeah, so the modules are produced in a factory and they have a shape, something like this from the factory. I don't know if you see this well. Um, and they are stacked on a truck. Either it can be stacked a number on each trailer or it depends on the size and the weight capacity of the trailer. And, and these kinds of things, but then you transport them like this, and then on the site where the tower is supposed to stand, you take the modules and you assemble them into sections, so circular sections. And this can be done uh, sort of beforehand, and when the big crane arrives for erecting the actual tower, then the sections, which are circular, then can be lifted on top of each other, and uh, then you put the termine on top of that. But now, why do we have to go up so high? Why don't we just build a lot more of them? Well, by increasing the height, you uh, you get to the stronger and more stable winds, uh, and you can put up a larger rotor and a larger generator. 
And since it's the uh, area of a circle, uh, the larger rotor means that you have so much more swept area and therefore you can have a much larger generator and the cost per kilowatt hour goes down drastically. So it's, it's funny because when you think of like going bigger, a lot of times you think of finding stronger materials and typically wood isn't considered to be like a very strong material because it just seems kind of common, you know, we built a chair out of it. We built a, you know, our house might be built out of it. And you might be saying, but you know, the big stuff, the skyscrapers, they're all made out of steel. So is that true? Is, is steel stronger than wood or is wood stronger than steel? Well, so steel is very strong per volume. So if you have uh, a lack of space and you need a lot of strength, then perhaps uh, a metal, perhaps titanium, um, very strong per, uh, per volume. But if you need high specific strength, uh, strength per weight, then uh, wood might be a good option. Yeah, and thereby when you build really large stuff, it, it can in some circumstances, like for wind turbines, uh, become more and more important with this specific strength. So this kind of gets into the like the square cubed law of when you want to make something really big. Like, uh, for example, the, you know, there were a lot of articles that came out like when some of the Godzilla movies came out. And it's like, you know, Godzilla, because he's so big and massive, his bones would need to be so big to support himself that he, it just wouldn't look like Godzilla anymore. It'd just be this big two legs with a little, you know, dinky thing on top. And so it, it, that's where the specific weight comes in because when you're building really, really tall, you're adding stuff on top of itself. And so the heavier that stuff is, the more uh, it needs to support itself and therefore you need to add more and then it's more and more and more until you have a really, really strong, you know, big, beefy, a ton of material structure. Whereas if you just went for a lighter weight design, a lighter weight material, you might not need to uh, do that necessarily. And that's the first time I've heard the Godzilla reference, but I'll <laughs> keep it in mind. Uh, but uh, yeah, pretty much like that. You get a, a bad design spiral if you keep using a heavy material. But if you instead use uh, what we use, a um, what we would like to refer to as nature's carbon fiber, um, a stack of thin veneers out of... Uh, common European spur, you have a very strong but very light material. So the taller we go, the more advantageous this material is compared to uh, steel. And so people generally aren't at the height that we're talking about for wind turbines. Like we're, we're either in a building or we're in a plane. And so it's somewhere between building and plane that the wind turbines exist and, and it's very windy there. And I think I've had experience where I will take the drone, I have a drone, and I'll, I'll start flying it up. And at a certain altitude, my drone is going to just start to drift away from me. And there's no way that I can tell it to come back to me. It doesn't have the speed in order to fight the wind to come back. And so I actually have to bring it down to a lower altitude where there's less wind. And that's the only way I can bring it back to me. And I've noticed that time and time again, no matter where I am, it seems, that if I bring it up too far, it just starts to drift away. And that's the wind that would be powering everything. And talking about the uh, cubes and scaling and stuff, I don't know if we mentioned that uh, the power that you get out of, uh, of the wind scales as the cube of the wind speed. So if you double the wind speed, you eight times the, <laughs> the power. Wow. Oh, wow. So that's a great effect. So when you see these smaller wind turbines, I, I've seen a couple in cities uh, like Boston. There's a there's a fairly small one. It's not much taller than many of the buildings, and it's a pretty small diameter as well. So the difference between a small wind turbine like that and a really truly massive one like the ones that you'd be building, the the difference in power generation. What what would you estimate that to be? It's it's massive. Um... Hundreds of times. Like I would say. Yeah. You, the small ones you talk in kilowatts and the big ones you count in, in megawatts. Yeah. So megawatts. Wow. wow. The largest ones on the market now, mainly used for offshore, they're they're more than ten megawatts. Uh, so if we uh, can build tall enough onshore, we can use them there as well. While they're currently used offshore is because offshore you have less of a wind gradient, so there's less of a difference between 
the wind uh, springs at a different altitude, but onshore you have a wind gradient, so the taller you go, the stronger the winds, as your drone example. Um, so that's what we want to do. Now, I saw some footage of you installing your first test uh, tower, and uh, I think that's where our viewer actually went and visited. It's a small island off the coast of Sweden, right? Um, and what are you hoping to do with that test? That has been a, a project now for, for more than two years, and during this time, lots of things has, have been tested, mostly for the tall uh, towers, the 150-meter tall tower design for for turbines more than 200 meters tall. Uh, but then we downsized the whole thing to uh, a one to a five scale. So you get the 30 meter tower. And uh, we put that together uh, using basically hand tools. Uh, this will not be uh, the way it's done in the future. Everything will, will be automized, of course, but the first one quite uh, spectacularly was able to make that way. And then uh, Manufacturing it, putting it together, uh, putting it on site. And then, of course, that tower is stacked with sensors. That will be a, a not-so-dramatic test. Uh, the, uh, the important tests are already done. Uh, the certification is ongoing and so forth. Uh, we've got a design basis uh, assessment done by a notified body and so forth. So... We know that it uh, works already. This is to follow up. Now, a lot of uh, manufacturers seem to be uh, slow to pick up on new technologies. They want to go with just proven, you know, we use steel bases and that's what we're going to use. Um, are you guys finding it difficult to convince people in the industry that this might be a better way to go? Before, uh, yeah. Um, especially when you, when, you're, um, when you haven't built anything, you stand <laughs> anywhere you're trying to pitch this. And then it might be uh, difficult and you haven't learned how to pedagogically say that wood is stronger than steel. You have to um, <laughs> learn how to do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, But now when it's we've done the first installation, we find it uh, a lot more, uh, a lot easier. And what's the timeline look like? So, I mean, you've, you're doing your testing now and you're in the middle of testing. When do you think you'll have your first commercial uh, installation? In uh, two years. Oh, wow. We already um, have assigned a letter of intent for that, and uh, it's uh, going to transfer into a purchase agreement uh, quite soon, hopefully, um, with a local utility that uh, would like to be the pioneer. Once the first company has signed a deal and you put up that first tower, do you think that that's going to kind of be the tipping point where other companies are more likely to start knocking on your door? Yeah, that. That was what we thought. Uh, we actually thought that we would need to put up the first 30 meter tower in order to be able to uh, sell the first large uh, size one. But we we got letters of intent for for commercial sized towers well before that, and uh, now we got several of those. So um, customers are quite eager to uh, to get in on this as it looks right now. Not wood. <laughs> no pun intended. Now, I'm a carpenter myself. I love working with wood. Um, and I know how strong plywood can be, especially when you're lapping the grain in, in opposite directions and gluing it together. But I've got to say, this sounds like a daunting task to make these huge sections. And you just said that your first ones you made by hand. Can you kind of walk us through the process of how these are built? Yeah. So basically, we uh, get uh, sheets of LVL, uh, which is sort of plywood where not all the fibers are, are sort of every other. Uh, there is a overweight of in one direction, the, the direction that needs to be a bit stronger. And they are then <laughs> machined into the right shapes and then they are pressed into the curved shape that uh, these have. And then they need to be sort of uh, machined into Tolerances. Tolerances, yeah. So we have quite uh, quite tough criteria for the tolerances to make the assembly on the site then to go smoothly. And so are each of those panels the same? Like, are they just like Legos and you can build as tall a tower as you want? Or is it a specific, each each one is kind of its own special little piece? So first of all, the, the tower is uh, conical in its shape. So the, the shape and the curvature changes over height. But in theory, you could possibly reuse the same parts for a different tower design. But 
also we have a, a manufacturing and design process that makes it easy to change for a different tower. So we try to to make both ways possible, actually. But basically, on, on, on the same um, cylindrical section, you have all the modules are the same. Yeah. So do you need a giant crane to put this together? Well, not... Um, so we put the modules together into the sections close to the ground. Uh, okay. But then, um, of course, to put the entire wind power plant together, then you need a giant crane exactly, because on top of our tower, you install the turbine, and uh, the nacelle and the generator for this weighs hundreds of tons. Now, I have a question about the longevity of the of the tower. So I'm imagining with the steel tower that they're like pre-painted um, and that they have a certain lifespan. What's the lifespan of a wooden tower? Because I've got to imagine that um, it, it's got to be protected from the weather. So our towers will last as long as a steel alternative because the wind power industry works such that uh, the customer expect a specific lifetime. Uh, and that is the lifetime that the tower is going to be specified towards, uh, no matter the material. So if you want 25 years warranty and guarantees, you get that. If you want 35 years, you get that. It's uh, mostly a matter of uh, the thickness of the wall, and we uh, fix that easily by just adding on uh, additional layers of veneer. So it, it's not really a problem. And the coating of the towers uh, is done uh, way before assembly in the factory already. It's a, a polymer uh, polyurea coating on top. Oh, cool, because I was picturing like a guy had to go up there with a paintbrush and like <laughs> paint the whole thing, but no, it's all, it's all done on the ground. Yeah, Geir didn't want that job, so we, we had to do it uh, already in the factory. It can be added also that and like any system uh, that has to to stay outside has to have a weatherproofing system, and they are made to protect what is inside of them. So we have a system that works for us, and the steel towers need to protect from uh, from rust, I suppose. So they have a system that works for that. I guess the question is, has this ever been done before? Like, have we ever made uh, tubular wooden structures like this? Or has it always sort of been your typical timber construction if you wanted to make something like that? Not that I can think of well, at the moment. Hmm. In in old hydro plants, there are yeah, uh, tubes, wooden tubes to lead water through, uh, perhaps. But I haven't seen tubular structures like this anywhere. And for example, we had uh, one of uh, uh, the executives from one of the largest uh, hmm. uh, wood manufacturer groups visit. And uh, he said, uh, whoa, this is unlike anything I've ever seen made out of wood before. And it's their material that we're using. So, um, I guess not. So, I mean, we've been inside of a, a, an old windmill before. I think it was built in like the 1800s or something. And yeah, it was not built in any way like how you've structured your wind turbine tower. So where did you come up with this idea? Like yeah. what gave you the idea to build this out of wood as opposed to any other material? And then how did you figure out how to do it? Well, a couple of years back, um, one of our co-founders, uh, David, he had been thinking about how about the wind industry for quite some time and he has background within wood boat building so he's familiar with the strength of this uh, of this material and the wood manufacturing industry has also been developing quite a bit you have these very very strong laminate uh, materials now and um, also uh, about 10 years ago there was actually a German company that brought forward a wooden tower for, for wind power. And they built a 100 meter tall uh, tower that is still standing in, in Germany. So it's a great example, but um, Modvion has the advantage of being a second mover here. So we could see some things that they had done that we thought could be done differently and with improvement. So, uh, we use a material that is um, uh, two and a half, half times uh, stronger uh, than what they used. Um, 
and we have a um, much more efficient assembly process, much due to uh, our, we have a self-bearing conical uh, shaped uh, wall, whilst they had a lattice structure that they put, that they clad on with these uh, uh, flat modules to have their octagonal shape. So you always get inspired what, of what has been done before, and then you try to add on where you can. And so because you have this modular design and you're able to build um, essentially a, a wider base than a steel structure, because again, this modularity means that you can build it almost as, as wide as you like, what is the limit on the height? And when you hit that limit, maybe it's limitless, I don't know, um, but at least where you're imagining the tallest tower that you could build um, in the near future to be, how much power could you generate from that wind turbine? That's a tricky question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which height would you like to? Yeah, I think so. so there are several heights that you can mention here, but I think there is a sort of, if you build a straight tower out of wood hmm. and you only consider the self-weight, so to speak, I think the maximum height is around four kilometers. <laughs> a sort of a silly that's example. A, uh, because that's, you, a, that's in a perfect world, right? Yeah, exactly. That's without any wind and with no turbine on top of that and stuff. So that's, sure. But that's sort of like the... It's not even the theoretical maximum in limit because then you still have a, a sort of prismatic shape so you can sort of build a pyramid or stuff. But it's a funny, funny sort of angle to look at it. But then we have another yeah. angle which is where does it stop to pay off uh, to build taller and taller wind turbines? And that's uh, sort of where the, the wind gradient that we mentioned earlier uh, stops having an effect. So when you go higher and higher up, the wind uh, picks up because the ground sort of breaks the wind. Um, but that effect diminishes quite a, a lot. And at about 300 meters, it's basically no effect anymore. Well, that in theory means that the, the under, the lowest part of the, the rotor would be at 300 meters. And usually then the, the diameter of the rotor, rotor would be 300 meters as well, I think. Yeah. And that would mean, uh, what's no, that, 450 meter tower? Yeah. But that's very wow. tall. Wow. Uh, so that would mean a total height of 600 meters, yeah. uh, and currently they're at 240, perhaps the tallest. So, um, nice. so I mean, the tallest wind turbine in the world could be made out of wood. Yeah, they, <laughs> they should, and we think they will. That's so cool. And I mean, as you mentioned earlier, the blades right now are largely made out of balsa wood as well. Yeah, it's a composite with balsa wood and uh, glass fiber or carbon fiber, I think, yeah. I think you could do it just about either way. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's, you know, when people kind of think about wind turbines, they're generally not thinking about wood because it looks so metallic. But every wind turbine that you see practically has wood in it, in the blades, the, the part that does uh, arguably most of the work. <laughs> and blades uh, or the balsa wood have a very high specific strength. And that's the reason to use it. And that's right. the reason to use wood in the towers as well. Now, when you were just picking up that block of the cross section right there in front of you, it looked very light. Like I was trying to picture if that was a block of steel. And I think you'd have a lot of trouble <laughs> picking it up. It's light, right? I mean, how much lighter is it than if you use steel? Um, normally, I speak about the the strength required for for the um, uh, the tower. So for the same strength, our tower only use uh, about two thirds of the weight, so it's thirty percent less. Um, and for the for a specific volume, it's uh, one sixteenth uh, of the weight, uh, sort of. Wow. Having a wind turbine that weighs uh, two thirds the, the weight of a steel one, that means that transporting the materials to where you're going to be building it, there's going to be less effort required. So that means a lower carbon footprint. But also the manufacturing would also have a, a lower carbon footprint, I've got to imagine. What does that look like? First thing you can mention is that the production of steel is very uh, dirty, so to speak. And carbon intense. Yeah, carbon intense. Yeah, that's the word. Uh, and that has to do with the fact that to make iron out of iron ore, you need to get rid of the oxygen that's connected to the iron atom. And then you have a, what's it called, blast furnace, uh, 
where you put in a lot of coke, which is basically coal, and you heat it up, and there is tons of carbon dioxide spitting out to pr produce the steel. So that's what we compete against in this world. So it, I think it's, it's about two or three tons of carbon dioxide per ton of steel. Uh, while we sequester, is it one ton per ton of... One ton uh, per wood? cubic meter, yeah, basically. Yeah, right. So yeah. two tons per ton of, um, uh, of wood. Wow. So you're, you're almost doing the opposite. So to, to make steel, you need to get rid of oxygen by uh, attaching it with carbon. And so you use uh, hydrocarbon to take away the carbon. But then essentially what you're doing is the tree is taking in all that carbon in order to build itself. And then you're, you're leveraging uh, nature to create uh, something that is going to ultimately benefit nature and humanity. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> now, I was on your website and it looked like as you guys are growing that you need uh, more employees. Is that true? Are you looking for engineers and builders? Yeah, that is true. Uh, Modvion will grow uh, for numbers of uh, years, uh, hopefully. Um, so we're currently uh, still quite a small team and, and we have to take in new employees at the time that we, that we can manage. But uh, definitely the, the team will grow. So, I mean, if you're watching this right now and you might be interested in joining this uh, growing industry, go check out ModVN's website. And for those who are watching, uh, we get lots of emails all the time about just, you know, startup companies. And they're always asking me, Zach, what's the next company to invest in? Um, are you a publicly traded company? How could people get involved in your company? We're not uh, publicly traded. Previous rounds have been taken care of uh, to a large extent by business angels, but it's um it's that kind of uh, investment. Okay, so basically keep your eye on this company and who knows where you guys will go in the future in terms of funding rounds and so forth. But I assume that eventually, if things work out, you're going to need more capital as you build out you know, bigger and bigger factories and so forth. Now, they must be fun factories to work in, I can imagine. Like as a woodworker myself, like I love being in wood, wood shops and this just sounds like you're going to be building giant wood shops. Yeah, kind of. The, the production of the prototype tower was uh, a lot of... Uh, work by hand with uh, the tools of the trade, so to speak. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It was hard work for <laughs> for a long time, but uh, it's a lot of fun to work with the material. It's just an additional benefit. And can you just talk about your intellectual property? So basically, I mean, if Jesse and I wanted to go out and build this tomorrow, you guys, I believe, own the intellectual property to this idea. Yeah. Uh, so we have um, uh, patents on, on several parts of the um, of how to do this basically on the joints and so forth and and also on on the what we see as the most efficient way to build a a uh, wooden uh, tower for wind turbines basically um, but if you want to build it for yourself that's okay as long as you don't <laughs> sell it don't give Jesse any, any ideas <laughs> i mean i'm just it, it sounds like a lot of a lot of thinking went into your actual design. And if I tomorrow wanted to do it, it sounds like it'd be a whole lot of work. And I'm just, I'm so glad that you guys are actually doing that work because uh, it's gonna be such a, a benefit to everyone if if we can have uh, larger and more efficient wind turbines that can be running uh, more frequently. And then lastly, if people are watching right now from around the world, maybe in the United States, and they're hearing like, wait, we could build taller towers. Can they reach out to you? Are you available to build towers, say, here in America? Yeah, definitely. Uh, Modvion aims to be a global company in the future. Uh, we start off here in Northern Europe, but uh, of course, we will. We would like to go to America. And, and very last question, uh, have you been on top of a wind turbine and are you afraid of heights? Uh, yes, yes and no on the two questions. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the right tour, guy for the job. Yeah. Uh, Gare used to be a master climber, so he's he's not afraid of things like that. Um, I, th I feel the taller you go, when, you, when you're above a certain altitude, you don't really feel like you're going to hit the ground anymore. <laughs> if you just jump off to the side <laughs> fast enough, you'll just go into orbit, right? Yeah. <laughs> haven't, haven't you ever felt that when you? It's it's more scary to bungee jump than to um, to have a para jump. So uh, that, that's my take on it. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you so much for, for joining us today and answering all of our questions. Um, I'm really excited about wind 
turbines now, especially wood ones. Yeah. I, I mean, it's so nice to to know that there are more earth friendly ways of, of making earth friendly technology. And I want to thank you for all your hard work and everything that you do, because it gives us a little bit more hope in the world. So thank you. Thank you. We should have hope. And uh, thank you for telling our story. <laughs>